When the people saw that Moses delayed coming down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves to Aaron and said to him, Come, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the golden rings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them to me. All the people took off their golden rings, which were in their ears, and put them to Aaron. He received what they handed to him, fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made a moulded calf. Then he said, These are your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to Yahweh. They rose up early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and, pe and bought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Yahweh spoke to Moses, Go, get down, for your people who you have brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned away quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Yahweh said to Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, they are a stiff-necked people. Now, therefore, leave me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. Moses begged Yahweh his God and said, Moses, why does your wrath burn hot against your people that you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians talk, saying, He brought them out for evil, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the surface of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, and turn away from this evil, turn it away from your people. Remember Isaac, Israel, and Abraham, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. So Yahweh turned away from the evil which he said he would do to his people. Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, tablets that were written on both their sides. They were written on one side and on the other. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, There is the noise of war in this camp. He said, It isn't the voice of one who shouts for victory. It's not the voice of those who cry for being overcome, but the noise of those who can't sing that I hear. As soon as he came near to the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. Then Moses' anger grew hot, and he threw the tablets out of his hands and broke them beneath the mountain. He took the calf which they had made and burnt it with fire, ground it to powder, and scattered it on the water. And he made the children of Israel drink it. Moses said to Aaron, Why did these people do what did these people do to you that you have brought a great sin upon them? <coughs> Aaron said, Don't let the anger of my Lord grow hot. You know the people that they are set on evil, for they said to me, Make us gods which shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. And I said to them, whoever has any gold, let them take it off. So they gave it to me and I threw it on the fire and well, out came this calf. When Moses saw that the people were out of control, for Aaron had let them lose control, causing derision among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, whoever is on Yahweh's side, come to me. All the sons of Levi gathered themselves to him. He said to them, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Every man put his sword on his thigh and go back and forth from gate to gate throughout the camp, and every man kill his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. 
the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. About 3,000 men fell of the people that day. Moses said, Consecrate yourselves today to Yahweh, for every man who was against his son and against his brother, that he may give you a blessing today. The next day Moses said to the people, You have sinned a great sin. Now I will go up to Yahweh. Perhaps I shall make an atonement for your sin. Moses returned to Yahweh and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made for themselves gods of gold. Yet now, if you will, forgive their sin, and if not, please blot me out of the book which you have written. Yahweh said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot him out of my book. Now go and lead the people to the place of which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I punish, I will punish them for their sin. Yahweh struck the people because of what they did with the calf which Aaron made. Yahweh spoke to Moses, Depart, go up from here, you and the people that you have brought up from the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your offspring. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hevite, and the Jebusite. Go to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, for you are a stiff-necked people, lest I consume you on the way. When the people heard this evil news, they mourned, and no one put on his jewellery. Yahweh had said to Moses, Tell the children of Israel you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go up in front of you for one moment, I would consume you. Therefore, now take off your jewellery from you, that I may know what to do to you. The children of Israel stripped themselves of their jewellery from Mount Horeb onward. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far away from the camp, and he called it the Tent of Meeting. Everyone who sought Yahweh went out to the Tent of Meeting, which was outside the camp. When Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose up and stood, everyone at their tent door, and watched Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered into the tent, the pillar of cloud descended, stood at the door of the tent, and Yahweh spoke with Moses. All the people saw the pillar of cloud stand at the door of the tent, and all the people rose up and worshipped everyone at their tent door. Yahweh spoke to Moses face to face, as a man speaks to his friend. He turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, didn't depart from the tent. Moses said to Yahweh, Behold, you tell me, bring up this people, and yet you haven't let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have sent, I know you have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor in my sight. Now, therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, please show me your way now that I may know it, so I may find favor in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. He said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Moses said, If your presence doesn't go with me, don't carry us up from here, for how would people know that I have found favour in your sight, I and your people? Isn't it that you go with us, that we are separated, I and your people, from the people who are on the surface of the earth? Yahweh said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found favour in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, Please show me your glory. He said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim Yahweh's name before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. He said, You cannot see my face 
for man may not see me and live. Yahweh also said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. It will happen while my glory passes by, that I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you will see my back, but my face shall not be seen. Yahweh said to Moses, Chisel two stone tablets like the first. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. Be ready by morning, and come to the mountain of Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you or be seen anywhere on the mountain. Do not let the flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. He chiseled two stone tablets like the first. Then Moses rose up early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai, as Yahweh had commanded them, and took in his hand two stone tablets. Yahweh descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed Yahweh's name. Yahweh passed by before him and proclaimed, Yahweh, Yahweh, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness and truth, keeping loving kindness for thousands, forgiving iniquity and disobedience and sin, and who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the children's children, on the third and on the fourth generation. Moses hurried and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. He said, If I have found favour in your sight, Lord, please let the Lord go among us. Even though this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels, such as have not been worked in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among you, among whom you are, shall see the work of Yahweh, for it is an awesome thing I do with you. Observe that which I command you today. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Be careful lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare for you. But you shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars, and you shall cut down their Asherah poles, for you shall worship no other god. For Yahweh, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Don't make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, lest they play the prostitute after their gods and sacrifice to their gods, and call, and one call you, and you eat of his sacrifice, <clears throat> and you take of their daughters to your sons, and their daughters pay, play the prostitute after their gods, and make your sons play the prostitute after their gods. You shall make no idol for yourself. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat the unleavened bread as I commanded you. At the time appointed in the month Abib, for in the month Abib as you came out of Egypt, all that opens the womb is mine, and all your livestock that is male, (coughs) the firstborn of cow and sheep. You shall redeem the firstborn of a donkey with a lamb. If you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. You shall redeem all the firstborns of your sons. No one shall appear before me empty. Six days shall you work. But on the seventh day you shall rest. In ploughing time and in harvest you shall rest. You shall observe the feast of weeks with the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of harvest at year's end. Three times in the year all your males shall appear before the Lord Yahweh, the God of Israel. For I will drive out nations before you and enlarge your borders. (coughs) 
Neither shall any man desire your land when you go up to appear before Yahweh, your God, three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood on my sacrifice with, unle with leavened bread. The sacrifice of the feast of the Passover shall not be left till the morning. You shall bring the first of the first fruits of the ground of the house to Yahweh your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Yahweh said to Moses, Write these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. He was there with Yahweh forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. He wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, Moses didn't know what the skin of his face, didn't know that the skin of his face shone by reason of him speaking with him. When Aaron and the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near. Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them all the commandments that Yahweh had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses was done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before Yahweh to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spoke to the children of Israel, that which was he was commanded. The children of Israel saw Moses' face, that the skin of Moses' face shone. So Moses put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. Moses assembled all the congregation of the children of Israel and said to them, These are the words which Yahweh has commanded that you should do them. Six days work shall be done, but on the seventh day there shall be this shall be a holy day for you, a Sabbath of solemn rest to Yahweh. Whoever does any work in it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations on the Sabbath day. Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which Yahweh commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to Yahweh. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as Yahweh's offering. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, sea cow hides, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. Let every wise-hearted man among you come and make all that Yahweh has commanded, the tabernacle, its outer coverings, its roof, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars and its sockets, the ark and its poles, the mercy seat, the veil of the screen, the table with its poles and all its vessels and the showbread, the lampstand also for the light with its vessels, its lights and the oil for the light, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, the screen for the door, the door of the tabernacle, the altar of the burnt offering with its grating of pulp bronze, its poles and all its vessels, the basin and its base, the hangings of the court, its pillars, their sockets, and the screen for the great gate of the court. The pins of the tabernacle, the pins of the court and their cords, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office. All the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. They came, everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whose his spirit made him willing and, he, and brought Yahweh's offering for the work of the tent of meeting. And for all of its service and for all the holy garments, they came both men and women as many as were willing-hearted, and brought brooches, earrings, signet rings, and armlets, all jewels of gold, when every man who offered an offering of gold to Yahweh, everyone with whom was found blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, 
ram skins dyed red and sea cow hides has brought them. Everyone who offered a silver or bronze offering brought it to Yahweh, and everyone with whom was found acacia wood for any of the works of the surface brought it. All the women who were wise-hearted spun with their hands and brought all which they had spun, the blue, the purple, the scarlet, and the fine linen. All the women whose heart was stirred up within them in wisdom spun the goat's hair. <clears throat> the rulers brought the onyx stones and the stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate, with the spice of the oil for the light, for the anointing oil, and for all the sweet incense. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to Yahweh. Every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all the work which Yahweh had commanded to be made by Moses. Moses said to the children of Israel, Behold, Yahweh has called by the name Bezalel, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all kinds of workmanship, and to make skillful works, to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting stones and in setting, and in carving wood, to work in all kinds of skillful workmanship. He has put in his heart that he may teach, both he and Ohiliab, the son of Ahizamach, of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with wisdom of heart to work all kinds of workmanship, of the engraver, of the skillful workman, and of the embroider, in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen, and of the weaver, even those who do not work any workmanship, and of those who make skillful works. Bezalel and Ahuliab shall work with every wise-hearted man in whom Yahweh has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all the work for the service of the sanctuary, according to all that Yahweh has commanded. Moses called Bezalel and Ahuliab and every wise-hearted man in whose heart Yahweh had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to work to do it. <coughs> they received from Moses all the offering with which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the sanctuary, with which to make it. They kept bringing freewill offerings to him every morning. All the wise men who performed all the work of the sanctuary, each came from his work which he did. They spoke to Moses, saying, The people have brought much more than enough for the service of the work which Yahweh commanded to make. Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither men nor women make anything else for the offering for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had, they had was sufficient to do the work, and not too much. No, for the stuff they had was sufficient to do the work, and too much. All the wise-hearted men among them who did the work made the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twitched linen, blue, purple, and scarlet. They made them with cherubim, the work of skillful workmen. The length of each curtain was 28 cubits, and the width of each curtain, four cubits. All the curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue on the edge of one curtain from the edge of the coupling. Likewise, he made in the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the second coupling. He made 50 loops in one curtain, and he made 50 loops in the edge of the curtain that was in the second coupling. The loops were opposite to one another. He made 50 clasps of gold and coupled the curtains to one another with the clasps. So the tabernacle was a unit. He made certain of goat's hair for a covering over the tabernacle. He made them with 11 curtains. The length of each curtain was 30 cubits and four cubits the width of each curtain. The 11 curtains had one measure. He coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. He made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that was outermost in the coupling, and he made 50 loops on the edge of the curtain which was outermost in the second coupling. He made 50 clasps of bronze to couple the tent together that it might be a unit. He made a covering for the tent of the ram skins dyed red, and a covering of the sea cow hides above.
He made the boards for the tabernacle of acacia wood standing up. Ten cubits was the length of a board, and a cubit and a half the width of each board. Each board had two tenon joins to one another. He made all the boards of the tabernacle this way. He made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards from the south southward, from the south wide. He made the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, southward. He made forty sockets of silver under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board for its tenons, and two sockets under another board for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle on the north side he made twenty boards, and the forty sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under another board. For the far part of the tabernacle westward he made six boards. He made two boards for the corner of the tabernacle in the far part. They were double beneath, and in the same way they were all the way to the top of one ring. He did this to both of them in the two corners. There were eight boards and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, under every board of two sockets. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle in the hinder part westward. He made the middle bar to pass through the middle of the boards, from the one end to the other. He overlaid the boards with gold, and made their rings of gold as places for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen with cherubim. He made it the work of a skillful workman. He made four pillars of acacia for it, and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold. He cast four sockets of silver for them. He made a screen for the door of the tent, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen, the work of the embroiderer, and the five pillars with it with their hooks. He overlaid their capitals and their fillets with gold, and their five sockets were of bronze. Bezalel made the Ark of Acacia Wood. Its length was two and a half cubits, and its width a cubit and a half, and a cubit and a half its height. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out, and made a moulding of gold for around it. He cast four rings of gold for it in its four feet, two rings on its one side and two rings on its other side. He made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He put poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to bear the ark. He made a mercy seat of pure gold. Its length was two and a half cubits and a cubit and a half its width. He made the two cherubim of gold. He made them of beaten work at the two ends of the mercy seat one cherub at the one end, and one cherub at the other end. He made the cherubim of one piece, with the mercy seat at its two ends. The cherubim spread out their wings above, covering the most mercy seat with their wings, with their faces toward one another. When the faces of the cherubim were towards the mercy seat. He made the table of acacia wood. Its length was two cubits, its width was a cubit, and its height was a cubit and a half. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold moulding around it. He made a border of a hand's width around it and made a gold moulding on its border around it. He cast four gold rings for it and put the rings in the four corners that were on its four feet. The rings were closer by border, the places for the poles to carry the table. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold to carry the table. He made the vessels which were on the table, its dishes, its spoons, its bowls, its pitchers, with them, with which to pour out of pure gold. He made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand of beaten work. Its base, its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its flowers were of one piece with it. There were six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of its one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side. Three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a bud and a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bud and a flower. So for the six branches going out of the lampstand. In the lampstand were four cups made like almond blossoms, its buds and its flowers, and a bud under the two branches of one piece with it, 
and a bud under the two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under the two branches of one piece with it, for the six branches going out of it. Their buds and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole thing was one beaten work of pure gold. He made its seven lamps, and its snuffers, and its snuff dishes, of pure gold. He made it of talent of pure gold, with all its vessels. He made the altar of incense of acacia wood. It was square, its length was a cubit, and its width a cubit. His height was two cubits. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold. Its top, its sides around it, and its horns. He made a gold moulding around it. He made two golden rings for it, under its molden crowns, on its two ribs, on its two sides, for places for poles with which to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices after the art of the perfumer. He made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood. It was square. Its length was five cubits. Its width was five cubits and its height was three cubits. He made its horns on its four corners. Its horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the vessels of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the basins, the forks, and the firepans. He made all its vessels of bronze. He made for the altar a grating of a network of bronze, under the ledge around it beneath, reaching halfway up. He cast four rings for the four corners of bronze grating to be placed for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. He put the poles into the rings on the sides of the altar with which to carry it. He made it hollow with planks. He made the basin of bronze and its base of bronze out of the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered at the door of the tent of meeting. He made the court for the south side, southward, the hangings of the court were of fine twisted linen, one hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their sockets twenty, of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. For the north side, one hundred cubits, their pillars twenty, and their sockets twenty, of bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets, of silver. For the west side were hangings of fifty cubits, their pillars ten, and their sockets ten. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. For the east side eastward fifty cubits. The hangings for the one side were fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. And so for the other side, on this hand and on that hand, the gate of the court were hanging of fifteen cubits, their pillars three, and their sockets three. All the hangings around the court were of fine twisted linen. The sockets for the pillars were of bronze. The hooks of pillars and their fillets were of silver. The capitals were overlaid with silver. All the pillars of the court had silver bands. The screen for the gate of the court was the work of the embroiderer, of blue, purple, scarlet, and twisted fine linen. Twenty cubits was the length and the height along the width was five cubits, like the hangings of the court. Their pillars were four, and their sockets four, of bronze. Their hooks of silver, and their overlaying of their capitals, and their fillets of silver. All the pins of the tabernacle, and around the court, were of bronze. These are the amounts of materials used for the tabernacle, even the tabernacle of testimony as they were counted according to the commandment of Moses. For the service of the Levites, by the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest, Bezalel the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that Yahweh commanded Moses. With him was Aholiab, the son of Ahisamath, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a skillful workman and an embroiderer in blue, in purple, in scarlet, and in fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work of all the work of the sanctuary, even the gold of the offering, was 29 talents, and 730 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. 
The silver of those who counted in the congregation was 100 talents and 100,715 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. A becker a head, that is half a shekel, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. For everyone who passed over those who were counted from 20 years old and upward, for 600, 3,550 men, the 100 talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil. 100 sockets for the 100 talents, one talent per socket. From the 1,753 shekels, he built hooks for the pillars, overlaid their capitals, and made fillet for them. The bronze of the offering was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. With this, he made the sockets to the door of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar and the bronze grating for it, all the vessels of the altar. The sockets around the court, the sockets of the gate of the court, all the pins of the tabernacle and all the pins around the court. Of the blue, purple, scarlet, they made finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as Yahweh commanded Moses. He made the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet and fine twisted linen. They beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work with it in blue, the purple and scarlet and the fine linen, the work of the skillful workmen. They made shoulder straps for it joining together. It was joined together at the two ends. The skillfully woven band that was on it, with which to fasten on, was of the same piece, like its work, of gold, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen, as Yahweh commanded Moses. They worked the onyx stones, enclosed in setting of gold, engraved with the engraving of a signet, according to the names of the children of Israel. He put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod to be stones of memorial for the children of Israel, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He made the breastplate of the work of a skillful workman, like the work of the ephod, of gold, of blue, purple, scarlet, and fine twisted linen. It was square. They made the breastplate double. Its length was a span, and its width was a span, being double. They set it four in four rows of stone. A row of ruby, topaz, and beryl was the first row, and the second row, a turquoise, a sapphire, and an emerald, and on the third row, a jacinth, an agate, and an amethyst, and the fourth row, a chrysolite, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in gold settings. The stones were, according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve, according to their names, like the engravings of a signet, everyone according to his name, for the twelve tribes. They made on the breastplate chains like cords of braided work of pure gold. They made two settings of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplates. They put the two ends of the two braided chains, they put them on the two settings and put them on the shoulder straps of the ephod on its front. They made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate on its edges, which were towards the side of the ephod inwards. They made two more rings of gold and put them on the two shoulder straps of the ephod underneath in its front, close by its coupling, right above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. They bound the breast of the breastplate by its rings to the ring of the ephod with the lace of blue, that it might be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod and that the breastplate might not come loose from the ephod as Yahweh commanded Moses. He made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. The opening of the robe in its middle was like that of opening a coat of, of mail, with a binding around its opening that it should not be torn. They made on the skirts of the robe pomegranates of blue, purple, scarlet and twisted linen. They made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates around the skirts of the robe between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate around the skirts of the robe to minister in as Yahweh commanded Moses. They made the tunic of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and for his sons, the turban of fine linen, the linen of the headbands of fine linen, 
the linen trousers of fine twisted linen, the sash of the fine twisted linen, blue, purple, and scarlet, the work of the embroiderer, as Yahweh commanded Moses. They made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote on it an inscription like the engravings of a signet, holy to Yahweh. They tied it to a lace of blue to fasten it on the turban above as Yahweh commanded Moses. Thus all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting was finished. The children of Israel did according to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so they did. They brought the tabernacle to Moses, the tent with all its furniture, its clasps, its boards, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, the coverings of ram skin dyed red, the coverings of sea cow hides, the veil of the screen, the ark of the covenant with its poles, its mercy seat, the table, all its vessels, the showbread, the pure lamp stand, its lamps, even the lamps to be set in order, all its vessels for the oil of the light, the golden altar, the anointing oil, the sweet incense, the screen for the door of the tent, the bronze altar, its gratings, the poles, all of its vessels, the basin and its base, the hangings in the court, its pillars, its sockets, the screen for the gate of the court, its cords, its pins, and all the instruments of service in the tabernacle for the tent of meeting, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his son to minister in the priest's office. According to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did all the work. Moses saw all the work, and behold, they had done it as Yahweh had commanded. They had done so, and Moses blessed them. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month you shall raise up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put the ark of the covenant in it, and you shall use the screen, and you shall screen the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table, and set in order the things that are on it. You shall bring in the lampstand and its lamp, and, and light its lamps. You shall set the golden altar for incense before the Ark of the Covenant, and put the screen of, of the door to the tabernacle. You shall set the altar of burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the Tent of Meeting. You shall set up the basin between the Tent of Meeting and the altar, and shall put water therein. You shall set up the court around it, and hang up the screen of the gate of the court. You shall take the anointing oil, and appoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and shall make it holy, and all of its vessels, and it will be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offering with all its vessels, and sanctify the altar, and the altar will be most holy. You shall anoint the basin and its base, and sanctify it. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tent of meeting, and shall wash them with water. You shall put Aaron in the holy garments, and you shall anoint him and sanctify him, that he may minister to me in the priest's office. You shall bring his sons and put tunics on them. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, that they may minister to me in the priest's office. Their anointing shall be for them for an everlasting priesthood throughout all their generations. Moses did so according to all that Yahweh commanded him, so he did. In the first month, in the first second year, on the first day of the month, the tabernacle was raised up. Moses raised up the tabernacle and laid its sockets and set up its boards and put in its bars and raised up its pillars. He spread the covering over the tent and put the roof of the tabernacle above on it, as Yahweh had commanded Moses. He took and put up the covenant into the ark and set the poles on the ark and put the mercy seat above on the ark. He brought the ark into the tabernacle and set up the veil of the screen and screened the ark of the covenant as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the ta table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil. He set the bread in order on it before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle. He lit the lamps before Yahweh as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put the golden altar in the tent of meeting before the veil, and he burnt incense of sweet spices on it, as Yahweh commanded Moses. He put up the screen of the door to the tabernacle. 
he set the altar of burnt offering at the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting and offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering as Yahweh commanded Moses. He set the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water therein with which to wash. Moses, Aaron and his sons washed their hands and feet there. When they went into the tent of meeting and when they came near to the altar, they washed as Yahweh commanded Moses. <clears throat> he raised up the court around the tabernacle and the altar and set up the screen of the gate of the court. So Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. Moses wasn't able to enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud stayed on it, and Yahweh's glory filled the tabernacle. When the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward throughout all their journeys. But if the cloud wasn't taken up, then they didn't travel until the day it was taken up. For the cloud of Yahweh was on the tabernacle by day and there was a fire in the cloud by night in all the sight of the house of 